In this video, we're going to see how to do a Man Whitney U test. This test is done when we have a collection of data which do not follow a normal distribution. As you know, the student's t test is based on the assumption that the data follow a normal distribution and have the same variance for each group. So if that situation does not apply, then we have to use a different test. So here we're examining a set of data. Uh, we're looking at oxygen saturation during isofluorine and superfluorine in inhalation induction of anesthesia. As you know, oxygen saturation is generally speaking not normally distributed because there would be a tail on the left hand side that would be negatively skewed. So we can't assume that the data would be normally distributed and therefore the student's U test is not appropriate. And so we use the man Whitney U test instead. Now, uh, it is easy enough to do the man Whitney U test in uh, Excel, but it does take a few calculations. There are three equations here, which I've simply copied over from Wikipedia. Uh, this is the equation for the statistic, and I'll explain to you how it works. Okay, so we start off, uh, we have our initial data. We're going to start by doing the descriptive statistics on this collection here. So we click on data. And we find our data analysis tab, which is here. Okay, we click descriptive statistics because uh, we want to describe the data we have. Our input range is these two columns here. Uh, these are grouped by columns. We have labels in the first row. We have isofluorine and superfluorine, two different groups. Our output range is going to be in cell D1. So we put our output there so we can see what the results are. That in again, D1, uh, and we want to include summary statistics and the confidence level for the mean. Okay, so having filled all that in, we click OK, and these are the results. Now, these are a bit squashed up, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier to read by clicking on Format and the Auto Fit column width. Okay, so we can see them. Now, all these labels here. They're all repeated. We don't actually need to repeat them, so I'm just going to delete these ones here. So we don't actually need them. So I right click and delete. Okay, and we shift those cells left. And that gives us that percentage there. Okay, so the mean in the isofluorine group is 90, in the superfluorine is 94, the median is 90 in one group and 94 in the other. Fairly close, I suppose, as expected. You notice the skewness is minus 0.4 in the isofluorine group and minus 0.4 in the superfluorine group. So both of them have a slight negative skew. Not very much though. But anyway, we have decided at the beginning that we are going to do a man with new U test. So that's what we're going to do. Okay? So the man with new U test, as you know, it's based on the ranks of the data. So we don't look, these are the raw data here, but what we do is analyze the ranked data. So what I'm going to do is over here, we're going to make two more columns. Okay, so we've got isofluorine at the top and superfluorine here. Okay, and let's make them look the same. Okay, I'll make them neither at all. Okay, so they look the same. Okay, and then in this, we put the equation for the rank of both of these. So the equation simply equals. Okay, and it's for rank. Rank as the average we want. Okay, rank average. Okay, and the numbers of this one, first of all, A2, and then comma. The reference is going to be to columns A and B. So I'm looking at the rank of cell A2 in the whole column AB. And I'm going to press A4 to make it dollar $A, dollar $B, so that when I copy this from one place to another, it stays always looking at column A and column B, and no other columns. Okay, and I want it in ascending order. Okay, ascending order means that I rank it well, from lowest to highest. Like that, okay, so the, uh, the very first number here, 97, is actually 73rd out of the total. So I copy this formula across, drag it across like that, and then I drag it down like this, 
the whole formula goes all the way across there. Okay. So these columns A and B are the raw data of oxygen saturation. Columns G and H are the ranked data. So you'll notice that uh, the cells with 100%, they're all 94 here. Okay. They will be 94. The rank from top to bottom. So all the hundreds get the same rank. Okay. So now we've done this ranking bit, uh, which as you've seen is dead easy. Excel does the work for you. Now we want to push in some equations. Okay. So uh, some calculations. The first calculation is just the rank sum. Okay. As you know, the uh, of the uh, uh, there are two names for this test. One is the rank sum test, the Wilcox and rank sum test, or the Man Whitney U test. They're both exactly the same thing, just two names for the same test. The rank sum is just the sum of the ranks for each group. So it's uh, equals sum. Okay, and for the first one, this is going to be isoflurane group, the whole column. Close that. Okay. So the sum of ranks for the isofluorine group comes to 2,265. That's just the total of all these numbers. Copy this across to the sevofluorine group. And then sevo is 2,785. So that's the sum of all the sevofluorine ranks. Okay. Then in this one, we put the value for u. Okay. And that's this formula here. It's the sum of the ranks for this group minus the size of the group. The group size times the size of the group plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so we just put in that formula here. Okay, so it is equals the sum of the ranks, which is that cell, minus the uh, n1, which is the count. Okay, the count of those cells multiplied by brackets uh, count plus 1, close brackets divided by 2. Okay, so that's the U value for the isofluorine group, and in the sevofluorine group we just copy it across, and it's 1510 in the sevofluorine group. Okay, so then what we look for is the minimum of those two. Okay, so here we're going to just put in equals the minimum of those two. Okay, we just want the lower one. It doesn't actually matter which group ends up with the lower one. We just choose whichever happens to be lower. Okay, so that's our value. That is the U statistic. Okay, that's how it's calculated. Now I want to do the test on whether this is significant or not. Well, the as long as the sample sizes are greater than about 20 each, then the U statistic is approximately normally distributed. This is its mean value. And this is its standard deviation. Okay, so we'll just calculate what we use. Again, Excel will do the work for us. So on U is N1 times N2 over 2. Okay, so equals count for group 1 multiplied by count for group 2 divided by 2. Okay, so that's the, uh, the mean value. And our standard deviation, we're going to call that sigma. Okay, and the formula here, well, it is a little bit forbidding, but it's not all that difficult. The square root of n1 times n2 times the sum of the two sizes plus 1 divided by 12. Just put this in here. So equals square root of, open brackets, it's n1. Okay, multiply by n2 with that one. Multiply by, open brackets, n1 plus n2 plus 1, close brackets, divided by 12, and close more brackets. And there we are. So that's our sigma. Okay, so we found a value for u of 990. This comes from a, uh, a normal distribution of mean 1250 and standard deviation 145. Okay, so how do we do our test? Well, this is very simple. Our p-value is okay, so we get the uh, norm, it's a normal distribution, so we get the norm dist, ok, 
say I'm reevaluating x, which is 990. The mean value is 1250. The standard deviation is 145. And we want the cumulative, so I'll say true to this. And there you are. And that's the man Whitney U test. There it is. Our p value here is 0 0.0365. Okay. Now, just supposing that we wanted to do the student's t test as well. Now, remember, we said at the beginning the student's t test may not be valid because the data are not normally distributed. But of course, we can plumb the numbers into the test. The test doesn't care where the numbers come from. It just means we have to interpret it with caution. So I'm going to put do the t test as well. So the t value t is, okay, we go t test, okay, t test. Array 1 is this column here. Array 2 is this column here. Okay, tails, we always do a two tail distribution. It's hardly ever the case that you do a one tail distribution. So it's always two tails. And the type, well, we'll assume unequal variance. Close the brackets. Now, interesting. So we've got a different p value with the t test. The p value for the t test is significantly lower than the p value for the man with the u test. So, but as we said, we're going to be a bit cautious with using a student t test. So we're actually going to quote the man Whitney p value in our results. So this is the one that we're going to quote. I'm going to highlight that. Okay. So this is how we do a man Whitney u test. Uh, we, uh, we calculate our formula from the rank sum. We take the low of the two rank sums, which is that. Its mean value is given by this formula here. And the standard deviation is given by this formula here. And then we just plug that into a standard normal distribution. Uh, and we get our p-value there. And that's how you do a man-written u-test. Thank you very much.